let's start with the EC2 first. So in EC2, I have to uh, make my uh, server as a private one, correct? So what kind of configuration yeah. I can do to make my server as a private? Yeah, actually it starts with the VPC thing, Manish. Uh, firstly, we need to create our instance in the private subnet. Then it will be automatically inside the private uh, server only. The thing you need to do uh, making it a private is you need to connect the root tables of your private uh, server to the NAT gateway. Then it will be treated as a private server. Okay. And if I do not attach NAT gateway with my uh, route table, will it be private or not? Mm, actually, it has to be attached with the NAT root tables of your NAT gateway. Otherwise, if you attach to that uh, internet uh, gateway or uh, other things, then it won't be treated as a private server. Right? Private server. Okay. So what is the use of NAT gateway here? Yeah, actually, it is like uh, the thing which you want to communicate with the public, uh, the requests which come from the uh, internet to the your public server, right? Hmm. That public server to the private server, the NAT gateway is like an intermediary thing that uh, communicates with the private and the public. Okay. So if I have to create a private subnet, let me go with the same question. If I have to create a private subnet, hmm. why do we require NAT? I can create private subnet without NAT as well. Or private issue to be yeah, but for the yeah, we can create public and private uh, whatever we want. Mm -hmm. But the purpose of creating a private is uh, do not allow the things into the private subnet directly. Yes. So using NAT only, we can go into the private. That is no. the use but, case of uh, but uh, NAT. I don't, NAT is utilized for internet, correct? I do not want the internet as well. So why will I keep NAT as well? Uh, if you do not want to communicate to the outside world of your private subnet or the private server, yeah. then NAT gateway is not required. Yeah, I didn't. Uh, you talked about like the huge case that I require uh, NAT, correct? I, I don't have to communicate. I have to keep the database. Uh, so I will just go with the private subnet only or I have to keep with the Lambda function. So I will go with the private subnet. NAT will be required when you want the communication, correct? Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so... Uh, let, uh, let's talk about the EC2 only. I have a EC2 which has been created in uh, public subnet and internet mm -hmm. gateway and all connectivity is there. Now I want mm -hmm. to make the, this public server as a private one and I do not have to touch its route table. So how can I do? Uh, once it is treated as a public server, then the things we need to do for making this private errors. Uh, yeah, not sure of it. Actually, we didn't change the things. Uh, once it is treated as a public, then uh, the completely it will be treated as a public server only. So for making this private, uh, we need to connect the route tables of a to a NAT gateway. Then that is the thing we did. Okay. If I have to uh, assign any of the, like just suppose that um, I have a web application which is hosted on EC2 instance, correct? Mm -hmm. And uh, this web application is being uh, like fetched from abc.com from the internet side. That is my DNS for mm -hmm. uh, fetching the application, correct? There are end mm -hmm. users for this application. Now this server has mm -hmm. uh, some issue and it's going down or it has been crashed. There is mm -hmm. some issue like oh, operating system issue or other three switch. Now, I have to route the traffic to the second server. I have, a, I'm just okay. going to create or you can think of like there is a backup kind of thing where I will be routing uh, the uh, traffic to the second server now, correct? So the server number two. Mm -hmm. Domain will remain the same because for the end user it should, there, there is no logic of changing the domain, correct? The request should be routed, that's yeah. your backend purpose. So mm -hmm. how will you switch this uh, server from first to the second, keeping your IP address and your DNS the same? Yeah, your Actually, DNS for your, this thing we can. Uh, your DNS yeah. should uh, your DNS should route to the same IP address. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. Actually, for this we can go with the auto scaling groups. Um, we can create a multiple nodes or a multiple servers inside our auto scaling group. Means which like um, one um, of our. I'm, I keep, I'm keeping only one server. It's a sing, uh, 
a small application you can think of. It's one EC2 instance is there. On this particular EC2 mm -hmm. instance, my application called as abc.com was there, correct? And this abc.com mm -hmm. is routing to the IP address you can think of 12.13.15.17, correct? This is the IP address mm -hmm. on which abc.com is getting resolved, correct? Now the first EC2 instance has some issue and this abc this ip address should now route to the second server abc.com will be there it will remain the same it's a dns ip address on which my dns was getting resolved that should also be the same but it should now route to the second uh, server okay means uh, the server is destroyed but you want the same ip address to be the next yes. server as well yes yeah, not sure of this Manish. Elastic IP address. Mm -hmm. EIP. Have you heard? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, it keeps, yeah. It keeps the same IP address for your server, correct? Okay. okay. Yeah. So okay. you can you can like disassociate and associate the same IP address to another server and your DNS will again route to the same same IP and then I this this IP will be attached to the second server, so your traffic will automatically get routed. Right? Okay. That's yeah. It. Okay. yeah. So oh, you, you mentioned about auto scaling. So let's talk about that as well. So what are the parameters based on which you can create this auto scaling group? Mm, actually, for creating any auto scaling groups or uh, anything that needs to be created automatically, we have to create the target groups for that means what are all the instances or what are all the servers that needs to be in the part of auto scaling. So whatever if uh, any of our server gets down or cached mm -hmm. because of the heavy traffic then automatically with the same specifications the new thing will be created in that uh, auto scaling group itself and yeah. it will be having the same load balancing capabilities as well yeah that's true so but what will be the parameter based on which you will do like there should be some parameter based on this factor yeah it's like the... a template thing no that's launch template like one of the parameter if i talk about it's the cpu utilization so whenever CPU utilization goes more, more than 70% or 60%, two number of servers should mm -hmm. be launched. So what are all other parameters based on which we can create this sort of screen group? Mm, actually, yeah, as you mentioned, CPU utilization is one of the reason means like it process uh, some particular uh, percentage, mm -hmm. then automatically it has to be created a uh, new one. Mm -hmm. And the other parameters are like, uh, yeah, Based on the traffic means like uh, we can use the things like a uh, node affinity or uh, taint tolerations, all these things to our node. So if any of the pod uh, means like uh, only one pod is getting all the requests or uh, like these things, we can use the load balancing there and we can shift our uh, traffic to all okay. the servers. What are the different kind of policies we can create in auto scaling? Policies. Not, not sure. Okay. Have you heard about okay. dynamic scaling policy? Uh -huh. No. Okay, no issue. So if I talk about S3 service, so buckets are regional or global? Yeah, it's a regional only. Okay, S3 is regional one. That's what you are saying, correct? Mm -hmm. S3 is a regional service, correct? This is what you said. Okay. 